Alright. Um. <coughs> right, yes, yeah, so. Sorry, but um, this is going to be another tank review, except it's going to be of a tank that I've already done, and this is a re-review, if you, if you like, of me going back over a tank which I may have, you know, viewed unfairly or something like that after playing it a bit and getting to know it and seeing what it's good at. You know, trying out different strategies and things. I'm going to go back to this tank and um, re-review it, and that tank is the gun carrier. It is a tier 6, very rare um, tank destroyer. It's not premium though. Um, here it is in the tech tree. Mm. Excuse me, whilst I just have a drink of tea. Um, here it is in the tech tree. Uh, tech tree rather. Um, it branches off from the Churchill 1 here. Um, so you can either go Churchill 1, you can either go to the Churchill 7, or the Gun Carrier. Um, the Gun Carrier is basically double the Churchill 7 in XP. Um, excuse me here. Mm, sorry. So, um, the Gun Carrier. We look at it here. The Churchill 7 here. The research cost is 27,000 XP um, to research it from the Churchill 1. The gun carrier is basically double that at 49,050 um, XP. And I, at the time of going to research this, I um, had a like bunch of free XP. I had about like 14,000 or free, something free XP some, from somewhere. I think it was probably because I'd bought a premium tank, forgotten to. Um, Put the to do the XP as um, go to the crew, um, and so it just accumulated as um, free XP on the actual premium tank. So I had to convert all that. So yeah, I basically had about twenty, thirty thousand on the Churchill one. Had all of this free XP, so I just thought, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna use that free XP to get to the gun carrier. Um, so yeah. So, as for what carries over from the Churchill 1 to the gun carrier, basically nothing. I think the twin 6 Bedford um, engines, yeah, the Bedford twin 6 and the radio is um, the only thing that carries over from the from the um, Churchill 1. The um, tracks you have to research, the guns you have to research, and the guns cost a lot, so you'll be stuck with this thing, the 3-inch... Um, 3 inch AT gun, 76.2 calibre, um, 0.36 dispersion, uh, 1.7 seconds aiming time. Um, pretty lacking on the um, average penetration of 112 and 140 damage. So, yeah, you're going to be stuck with that gun until you get to, I think it's 15,000, yeah, 15,800 to get to the 3.7 inch um, AT gun, um, which is. Um, Slightly better in dispersion, slightly um, longer aiming time of 2 instead of 1.7, and the dispersion is 0.35 instead of 0.36. Better penetration uh, of 1.51, or sorry, 151, not 1.51, 151. Um, 230 average damage, which is very good, and uh, a slower rate of fire. And then you have to get 16,000? Yeah, 16,200 XP to get to the 32 pounder AT gun, which Massively boost the penetration, 214, um, with 246 with average um, with APCR, 250 average damage, which is slightly higher. Even better dispersion of 0.34. However, the longer aiming time of 2.1 seconds and a lot um, slower rate of fire, um, which is also the stock gun on the Tortoise. So, and it's also one of the guns on the AT-15. So yeah. Um, and as for the tracks, um, you're not, sorry, how much do the tracks research? Uh, about 5,000 XP, so yeah, you'll be stuck at pretty much stock apart from the engine and um, radio. I, if you are trying to play this thing with the stock radio, good luck. 40, 400, sorry, signal range is terrible. Um, so yeah, good luck trying to play it with that. Even with the better radio, it's still not much better. But it is a method of getting from the British heavy line to the um, British 
tank destroyer line if you don't want to go from the universal carrier to the valentine to the electo to the 82 to the 88 um, and even now I don't particularly like the 87 I'm sort of stuck on whether I should sell it or not but you know um, so yeah I really want to get to the archer in order to get to the Achilles, but I'm going to need lots of free XP for that 20,000. Um, but anyway, so this is about the gun carrier. So here it is, in all of its glory, as you've seen it a couple of times on my road to marks of excellence. Um, I'm now at 70% better than all than other players playing this tank, which is woohoo. Um, but that will be the game that I use as the gameplay part of this review. So, as for this review, 650 hit points is the most um, out of all of the tier 6 tank destroyers, other than um, the other British tier 6 tank destroyer, which is the 87. No, the 88. Um, here it is, 800 hit points, which is massively good. Um, compared to other tier 6 tank destroyers, um, the, AR the ARL V39, 610, which is still less than the gun carrier. Um, you've got the Jackson, or the Hellcat. Jackson is 560. The Hellcat is 550, but I think you get turret upgrades for this. Yeah, you do, which will probably boost it up slightly higher, but... Still less than the gun carrier. Um, Russia, you've got the SG-100, which is 580, which is still not very good. Um, Flak bus, you've got 350, that's tier 5, why am I looking at tier 5? Um, 600 for the Nassau, which is still not as good. Jagdpanzer is also 600, so still not as good. Um, the Dikamax is 550, and that's a premium, and those are all of the tank destroyers. Yes, they are. So, really, the only thing that beats the gun carrier in health is the 88 or box tank. Those are the only things that will beat the gun carrier in HP at least. Um, it is very weighty 41 tons, 41.3 with my current loadouts, um, which is gun, ammo, binos, and camo nets. So. Yeah, with only a 350 horsepower engine, which is the Bedford Twin Six bus engine, um, it only goes at 25.7 uh, kilometers an hour, which is very slow. But then again, Churchill body, are you really that surprised? It's basically this, but without the turret and with a big superstructure and a gun sticking out the front. I mean, that's that's the only difference between. Churchill 7 and the gun carrier, except that the gun carrier is worse than the Churchill 7. But, um, as for the traverse speed, traverse speed is also not very good, 28 degrees per second. Um, box tank is higher, the TOG is slower, Firefly is better, uh, because these are mediums. Um, Churchill 7 is only 20 hull traverse, which is strange when you consider that it's basically the same, except it has a larger superstructure. But, and it also weighs less, and it has the same engine, so it's sort of, okay, strange how you've done that, but, yeah, goes slower, has a slower reverse speed, um, what else, 26, it's faster than the, um, Japanese Tiger, which is, um, strange, but, oh well, so, but even so, it's still very lackluster in the reverse speed, um, and as for the gun traverse, the gun traverse, you can go from about here to maybe here to here. Pretty much, the gun traverse is the width of these tracks in the garage. Um, that's that's it. That is your gun traverse. It's not very good at all. Um, which means that you are going to be rotating the tank a lot in order to keep tracking a target. Um, as for the armor, armor is terrible. 88 at the front, 63 at the side, 50 at the rear. Not very good. Apparently on the Xbox edition, it is better with the armor. It's 152 at the front, um, with I think more at the sides and rears. So, Xbox 360 gun carrier drivers do have it better off than the PC gun carrier drivers, apparently. Um, but, here, World of Tanks PC, it's terrible. Terrible hull armor. I mean, considering the fact that the Churchill 7 has got 152 at the front, 95 at the sides and rear of the um, hull. Or, well, 50 at the rear, 95 at the side, and 152 at the front. I mean, it does seem 
strange that the gun carrier has had all of that armor stripped off of it, and so it's just left with 63, 50, 88. So it's. But then again, I suppose you could be saying that in order to fit all of the crew and the large gun in there, they had to make room. But okay. Um. But yeah, so the, the armor is nothing good. You will be penetrated, which is all the more reason that you need to stay hidden, which is the reason that I have binos and camo net, because that's the way you're meant to play the, the gun carrier. Um, as for the guns, I have gone over them, but I'll go over this one in the in more detail, um, which is the um, gun ordnance quickfire 32 pounder anti-tank gun. 94 millimeters, because that's a 32 pounders. 94 millimeters, 7.06 rounds of uh, rate of fire rounds per minute, which is not very good. Um, 214 penetration with standard AP is enough to get you through any tier 6, tier 7, some of the tier 8s as well. So it's a very good gun to mount on this tank. Um, with even better um, a uh, APCR penetration of 246. 47 high explosive, but it's uh, high explosive, so you know, what does that matter? Um, 250 average damage with 330 with high explosive, but once again, high explosive. Um, very good dispersion of 0.34, pretty good aiming time of 2.1 seconds, and it weighs almost 3,000 kilograms, which is quite weighty. Um, but then again, 94mm, you know, it's a 32 pounder anti tank gun. This thing is going to weigh a ton, look at it, with the wonderful mark of excellence. Um, but, yeah, the gun is a very good gun to mount on this tank, but th trying to play it with either of these two, um, with either, either the 3 inch or the 3.7 inch, is not fun. Um, this gun can only, the 3 inch is only on the gun carrier, you can only use it on there, and the 3.7 inch is also only for the gun carrier. So, yeah, you don't need to research them in order to get to the next tank, the 87, but it is advisable that you do get the top gun on this tank if you want to get any sort of XP whatsoever. Um, and even then I find it difficult, because, but then again it's me driving the tank, so... Um, but... So... That is the simple stats. Um, other than the 26 degrees per second gun traverse, which is less than than what than the degrees that you actually get. I think you get about like ten and ten either way of the gun. That's it. It's terrible. Um, because look at it. They couldn't even have mounted it in the center of the hull so that you can actually do that. I mean, they could have had it actually up so it's not being blocked by the tracks. But no, they had to mount it just so that it's in line with the tracks. So that this way. You can't really move it that much because there's a track there, and the same with the other side because there's a the driver's hatch and b another track there. So it's why would you do that? Why would you not just up it, move it up a bit at least, so that you can have a larger gun arc? But I don't know. So Britain, why would you? Why would you do that? Um, but yeah, so very 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 small gun traverse arc. Um, which makes the gun traverse speed negligible because it'll take you less than a second to actually move it from one side to the other. So, yeah. um, 340 meters signal range, uh, view range, rather, which is um, pretty standard, I think, of, of um, tank destroyers down here. 350 for the box tank, 360 for the TOG, 370 for the Firefly, 360 for the Cromwell B, 360, 390 because it's a light tank and open topped. 370, 370, so it's probably about standard of um, tier 6 um, tank destroyers. I suppose we can look at look at some of these other ones. 87, what about you? 350, um, didn't want to look at the Sherman 3, go away. Um, ARL, um, 350, even with that mini turret on top. Uh, Jackson Hellcat are probably going to beat it because they're open top tank destroyers. You have 370. SU 100, 350. Closed top tank destroyers. They had a nerf in their um, view range, so yeah, I'm not surprised. Stug, 310, which is even more terrible. 340 because it's an open topped. Um, oh no, sorry, we're looking at the wrong thing. Jagdpanzer. Jagdpanzer 350, uh, Nashorn open topped 360, Dicker Max open topped 
400, which is very good. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty standard of all the closed top tier 6 tank destroyers. As for the signal range, however, the signal range is terrible. Your tier 8 radio is um, 350 signal range, with the max the maximum of any radio in World of Tanks is 750 meters. And let's look at some of the other radios that we have equipped here in some of our tanks. Firefly 350, 370, 350, it's pretty standard British radio range. Um, 440 for the Vox tank because, you know. 570 for the Cromwell B, 550, 700, 620, 710. Um, this tank really does rely on range and using that massively good penetration and keeping hidden to snipe stuff from range you can't really do that with a British radio because it's not a very good radio range um, 550 is you know you can you have this radio on the tortoise I mean if you're using this radio on the tortoise that's going to be even worse but I mean down here at tier 6 in this tank it's just a massive hindrance that you do not need because of all the other hindrances that you have in this tank so yeah as for your equipment setup, um, I've got all these three things. If you have your track blown off, definitely use this repair kit immediately. Do not even think, just use it. Get out of there. I mean, if you've been spotted, you're most likely dead in any case, but don't hang around and think, oh, maybe I'll disappear and they'll stop shooting at me so I can get my track back up. No, just repair it. Use the repair kit. Um, and one other thing that I'd like to note is that these things are pretty expensive, um, these 94mm armor piercings. They're 630 every one shot, and armor piercing is four, um, APCR is 4,400, so this is a very expensive gun to run. Um, I mean, high explosive is a lot cheaper, 250, but if you want to do any considerable damage and help your team in any way, armor piercing is the way to go, but it's very, very expensive. Um, it's a very expensive gun to run. It's a very expensive tank to run, because in a standard game, you'll spend about if you fire about ten shots, you'll spend about five thousand credits, six thousand credits. Repairing is also about six thousand. So you're not really going to make money in this tank. Just as a warning. Um, now for the equipment. Um, here you go. <coughs> Come on, shout the equipment. So, camo net, yes, going to be very, very useful on this tank. This tank is very important to keep yourself hidden. Um, so definitely go with the camo net. Um, the wet amarank, possibly, if you want. There are much more important things to equip on this tank. So, no. Don't go for the wet amarank. Um... Because the medium tank kind of a tank gun ram is always useful, but on this tank definitely. Because I've got a um, where's my reload? It doesn't tell me my reload time. My reload time is about seven uh, seven point five seconds um, with the ga with the um, gun rammer. So without the gun rammer, it's going to be like eight nine seconds, which is a long time. Um, I mean, this gun doesn't fire very fast anyway, but, I mean, getting the medium ta caliber tank gun rammer is definitely going to be useful. Um, very important to get. Um, binocular telescopes, again, same thing with Kamenet. Yeah, you'll want to stay hidden and spot your own targets, because, really, the way I've got this set up with the um, binoculars and the um, Kamenet, my view range when stationary is pretty much the same as my radio range, so you're pretty much going to be spotting your own targets. Um, because anything past your view range, your radio is not going to be able to pick up, which is a problem with the um, a problem with the British radio on this tank. But yeah. um, coated optics are also going to be useful on this tank, so if you want to swap out maybe Camonet or something for coated optics, then sure, do that. I wouldn't hold it against you. Um, Plus 10 to aiming speed, no, hold off on that. Uh, the 2.1 seconds aiming time is pretty good, so hold off on that. Um, fill uh, tanks with CO2 and um, heavy spore liner, no. Both of them, no, don't, don't. There's much more important things to get on this tank. Toolbox, um, possibly on this tank, but once again, I'd say definitely go with um, tank gun rammer, cabinet, binos, like I've set up, but... Depends on how you want to play the tank. Playing it as an assault gun 
is not is not a good idea, but if you want and you can get away with it, it maybe. Um, improve vents are also going to be useful on this tank, um, but then again, there's a lot of credits. But that plus five to crew skills, getting that reload time down, definitely um, going to be useful. So those are all the equipments. That's how I've set my equipment up because I think that is the optimal for um, this tank. So, yeah. As for your crew, you've got a crew of four. You've got the commander slash radio operator, which is not the optimal what I would have because six sense is going to be the most important thing, one of the most important things on this tank um, to get. Definitely six cents. Um, Eagle Eye is also going to be uh, useful to get on this um, on this tank. Uh, Jack of all trades probably hold off on that because there are much more important things to get on this tank. Recon also going to be very useful on this tank because you're British radio. You're pretty much going to be spotting your own targets, so increased view range definitely. Mentor hold off on getting that. Situational awareness definitely. That's the skill that I'm next going to be getting to extend the signal range. Um, well, signal boosting and situational awareness, yes, definitely. I'll be getting si uh, I'll be getting signal boosting then, situational awareness, um, then probably, um, then probably recon then eagle eye. Um, but call for vengeance, you probably not hold off on that because the British radio. Same with relay range. Um, see, re same with relay rather because the signal range is not very good. So, yeah, hold off on them. Um, Dead Eye is definitely useful. Um, you want to make your presence felt because it's a pretty long reload time and gun carriers, if they get spotted, they will die very quickly. So once you get spotted, it's pretty much going to be dead for you because this tank will die in about two or three shots. So, yeah. But Dead Eye is going to be useful. Make those shots count um, because A, if you miss, it's a very expensive miss. Um, and B, if you hit and penetrate, doing you know, three two hundred and fifty average damage is very nice. That's good out alpha, but getting dead eye to get that extra module damage is gonna be even more satisfying. Um designated target possibly, armor possibly, um snapshot, it doesn't really have a turret and you don't have very good turret rotation anyway, so you don't have much of a fire arc, so that'll be a very wasted skill on this man. Don't do not get it for this man, whatever you do. Um Driver Traverse. Clutch braking. Definitely, definitely, definitely get clutch braking. Increasing tra the traverse speed on this tank is going to be one of the most important things for you to get because you're going to be keep on turning the hull in order to get your very limited cone of arc to keep tracking them targets. So definitely get your traverse speed up as soon as possible. So definitely go with clutch braking. Off-road driving as well. Going to be very useful. Preventive maintenance possibly. Smooth ride, no. Um, controlled impact, no, don't don't ram stuff in the gun carry, you will die before you get anywhere near anything to ram it. As for the loader, I'm getting repairs because repairs is always useful. However, I would also say camouflage. Camouflage is will be a very useful skill for um, this, this, this crew because you'll want to stay hidden as long as possible. It is a very large thing to hide, so you don't have very good camo bonus anyway. So increasing it with camo net, camouflage, things like that will be very useful and important to get. Safe stowage possibly, adrenaline rush go on then, adrenaline rush is always useful. Intuition, if you're going to be swapping between AP and APCR, your AP does have very very good penetration but sure I can understand taking some APCR so possibly intuition but no. Um, and then your common skills for everyone. So overall use the tank as a sniper. Do not for any reason unless it's very very dire to the flank do not go up although in the replay that I have to show the gun carrier off the map is Prokhorovka but Prokhorovka is one of those maps where if you don't have a good view range and signal range and you're a tank destroyer that doesn't have armor you're gonna have a very difficult game because in this tank it was an encounter and I was going to cover the cap but everyone was just too far away for my radio to pick up and so therefore they're out of my view range so I can't actually see them which makes it very frustrating to actually do some do something useful um, and by sniping so I eventually just went up into the cap circle and just put in flanking shots to some guys on the hill so 
So unless it's some situation like that where you really really need to stop a flank from like six enemy tanks when there's only two or three of yours on that flank then sure go up but for everything just stay hidden. So um, thank you for watching and goodbye.